Number 30. A 70 kilogram ice hockey goalie originally at rest catches a 0.15 kilogram hockey puck slapped at him at a velocity of 35 meters per second. Suppose the goalie and the ice puck have an elastic collision and the puck is reflected back in the direction from which it came. What would their final velocities be in this case? All right. So first thing is we're dealing with an elastic collision and they're telling us right velocities and masses. So what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about using right momentum, uh, my cons conservation of momentum uh, equation. Right? And that is simply that the momentum, I'll denote that as P, right? The momentum initially will equal the momentum finally. Okay, so now let's expand on both. So the initial momentum in the problem will be consistent upon both objects, both the uh, goalie and the puck. So here I have a nice little picture. All right, so basically I can write, and by the way, let me put some numbers in here. I'll call the goalie, you know, object one and the uh, puck object two. So therefore, the momentum of the goalie will be equal to the mass of that goalie. Okay, so that'd be M1, uh, multiplied then by the velocity of that goalie before the collision, right? Or initially, okay? Actually, what I'll do is because it might get a little confusing with the I's, oops, and the uh, uh, ones. Let me just do this, that the momentum before the collision equals the momentum after, okay? So this is going to be before the collision. And that will be added to the mass of the second object, which is the hockey puck, multiplied by the velocity of that second object before the collision. And that will then equal the mass of that person, right, of the goalie, uh, after the collision multiplied by the velocity after the collision, plus the mass of then the hockey puck, right, multiplied by the velocity of the hockey puck after the collision. So let's just take a step back and see what we know. We know the masses of both the objects, right? They told it to us in the problem. 70 kilogram hockey player, 0.15 kilogram hockey puck. So I know this, and then, actually let me circle them. I know this, and I'll change the color. I know this, I know this, I know this, and I know that. Next, I realized that they told us the uh, initial velocity of the uh, goalie. They said he was at rest, so therefore I know that component. We also know the initial velocity of the uh, hockey puck. Now I chose to frame the problem where the hockey puck is traveling initially to the left, and you could have easily shown the problem starting from the left and working to the right with the hockey puck. The sign would have been positive there, but I chose this way to frame it so the value here is negative. So I do know this value. And remember, now I don't know the velocities after. Okay, that's what we're looking for. But realize that all I don't know out of this equation is this term and this term. So what I'm thinking to myself is, if I know another equation that also has these two variables in it, where we don't know them, and we know all the other variables, well, then I can solve this problem because then it's a simple system of equations problem. So let's think. There's actually an equation that uh, we developed in the prior problem, number 29, uh, that dealt with relative velocities for elastic collisions. I'm just going to write the equation down here. If you're curious as to how it came about, please view uh, question number 29. Went through that in detail. So here is the relative velocity uh, formula for elastic collisions. It says that the uh, velocity of the first object before the collision minus the velocity of the second object before the collision will equal the velocity of, the, excuse me, the velocity of the second object after the collision minus the velocity of the uh, first object after the collision. All right, so now uh, here again, and once again, this is only for elastic collisions, and this is the relative velocity formula that we derived in the prior question. Now, what I realize here is that we know the velocities before right, the collision happened. We know the initial, the initial velocity, essentially, right, the velocity before the collision occurred of the hockey player. And we also know the uh, velocity of the puck before the collision, and we don't know these two terms. So here we go. We now have two equations, right? We have this equation, okay? And we have this equation, and we have two unknowns. So now this is just easy peasy stuff in terms of how to do, you know, how to solve this. We have to solve one of the equations for one of the variables and then plug it into the other, okay? So 
How do we want to do that? Um, I mean, there's a couple of ways you can do the algebra here, but I think the easiest way might be uh, to, let's say, solve this equation for, you know, V2A, let's call it. All right. Now, when I do that, right, all I have to do is add this term. All I have to do is add this term on over to the left, right? So basically, my new equation will become V2A equals, uh, I'll write this first, V1A plus V1B, okay, minus V2B. All right, now what I'm going to do here is, since I have this equation in terms of V2A, what I simply do is I take this and I plug it on in for that variable there. Okay, now let me rewrite the momentum equation here. So it's now going to look like M1 V1B, and let me make the B a little neater, plus M2 V2B will equal M1 V1A plus M2 V, well, no more V2A, right? Now we're going to plug in this term. We have V1A plus V1B minus V2B. Okay. Now what's very nice is that, remember, I now only have one variable I don't know. The only variable we don't know is the, ve the velocity after the collision of the person, right, or the hockey player. All right, we know everything else in this equation. So now what I'm going to start doing is maybe canceling some terms that I can just to make it a little easier. And the reason why I'm going to look to do that is because they told me that the initial velocity of the hockey player, which I called object number one, is zero, right? So anywhere where I have V1B, right, the velocity of the hockey player before the collision, I know that whole term will be zero. So here, that whole term goes to zero. Okay, where else do we have V1B? Well, I have V1B in here too, right? I have V1B right in here. Okay, so that's going to be cancel it as well. So now, why don't we just simplify this a little bit, just to clean it up. So now we have M2 V2B. All right, we'll equal M1 V1A plus M2 multiplied by V1A minus V2B. Okay, so now from here, remember the whole goal is again to solve for this variable, all right? So what I'm probably going to do next is I'm going to look to distribute the M2 to both terms, all right? So that now I can start combining then the V1As, all right? So let's do that. So now we have M2 V2B will equal M1 V1A plus M2 V1A minus M2 V2B, okay? So now from here, right, what do, we, what do we see we have? Well, we have a couple of things, okay? I notice that here I have a common variable, right, the V1As, and I also notice that these two terms are the exact same thing, okay? So now I'm gonna to look to combine like terms, try to get this a little more simplified, okay? So first thing I'll do is I'll add this term on over to the left-hand side. And notice since you're adding the same term right to each other, you can simply rewrite that as 2M2V2B, right? Because there's two of them, okay? So it's really two times that, okay? That will then equal M1, or let me actually pull out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the common term, okay? So we got V1A times m one plus M2, okay? And guess what now? Remember, the whole goal is to solve for V1A. What do I need to do? I can now divide this term on out, right? I divide it from the right-hand side over here, and then I divide it from the left-hand side, okay? I know I'm running out of space, but I think you guys can see that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rewrite that over here on the, I'll do it on the right-hand side, okay? Let me put a little, little slanted divider here, just so we don't confuse the work. And I'll also put this up here. So now we have 2 M2 V2B, okay, divided by M1 plus M2 equals V1A. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. That whole mess worked down to this thing. Right? And now all we need to do is just plug in the numbers, right? And we'll be able to solve it. Not a problem. Okay. So let's do it. So we got 2 times the mass of the second object, and the second object we call the hockey puck, 
right? So that's going to be 0 0.150. Multiply by the velocity of that second object before the collision. Now make sure you've got to plug in that negative sign, okay? So it's going to be negative 35.0, all divided by m1, so the mass of the first object, right, which was 70 kilograms, uh, 0 0.0. It doesn't really matter, though. But And then add that to, or add to that, uh, the mass of the hockey puck, which was 0 0.150. And now that will equal V1A, okay? In other words, that will equal the uh, velocity after the collision of the first object, aka the uh, hockey player. Now, if you just think about this, right? If the hockey player is stationary and the puck is traveling this way and it collides with him, what do you think, what direction do you think the hockey player's velocity is going to be? after the collision, it should be pointing to the left. Right? And therefore we should expect to get a negative value. All right, and let's see if it works out. So let's do the math. So we got two times 0.15 times negative 35, all divided by, put your parentheses, 70 plus 0.15. And there we go, look at that. And now how many sig figs? Eh, I guess I'll keep it at three. Okay, so that will equal, um, and I'm gonna write it, so V1A, and let me just write it right beneath this, okay? So now we get a negative 0 0.14, well, really 150, right? If we consider rounding, 150, and that will equal V1A. V1A. All right, so let me box that answer. So there it is, and that's what we expected, right? We expected it to be negative. And if you think about the difference in the masses here, you know, between the, you know, the puck and the, and the hockey player, we should expect his final velocity or after the collision to be definitely pointing to the left, but not that much, right? And that's kind of what we see over here. So it sounds good to me. So that took care of V1A, right? And then what do we need to do? Well, now all we need to do is plug V1A back on in. It almost looks like I'm looking at it right now. It looks like VIA at the bottom, but that's a one. Um, we got to now plug that back in. And I think the easiest equation to plug that back into is this relative velocity equation at the top. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, let me rewrite that over here on the left-hand side. So we got V1B uh, minus V2B, okay, equals V2A minus V1A. Now remember, I know this term, and I know this term, and I know this term, so now I'm looking for the velocity of the hockey puck, right? So I'd all, all I'd have to do is add this term on over, correct, to the left-hand side. Okay, so now we have a, an equation that looks like this, V1A. V1A plus V1B minus V2B is equal to V2A. And now all we do is plug it in. Okay, so V1A is what we just found over here. Make sure you plug in the sign, negative 0 0.150 plus V1B. Remember, 1 was the hockey player, and that's before the collision. It was 0, right? So this whole term just canceled out. And then minus, now, now here's the trick. Okay, so now it says specifically, oh, let me leave that... Uh, let me leave that slash there. Okay, now it says minus now V2B. Now just be careful with the signs. So I probably shouldn't have written that plus sign in yet, all right, because I I, I canceled out the, um, the V1B before. So now it's going to be minus V2B, okay? So it's minus now. What's the value of the velocity of the hockey puck before the collision? It's a negative value, okay? So that should be negative 35.0. Okay, and now that will equal V2A. So now all we need to do is simply just calculate. Okay, just plug it on into the calculator. So since I'm running out of a little space here, let's just move this on over a little bit. Isn't that magical? So now, well, let's just plug it in. All right, so we have negative 0.15, negative 0.15 plus, right, because it's a double negative. So it's going to now be plus the 35. So this will be now the and this is the value for the hockey puck after the collision. It's 34, excuse me, I don't know why I wrote a 2, but it's clearly a 3, 34.9. Okay, so 34.9, that's considering our uh, significant figures here, 34.9 uh, meters per second. Sorry about that. It looks, sounds like the UPS driver is getting mauled. Or, well, actually, my window's getting mauled. The UPS driver is fine. It's the window that's getting damaged right now. But what are you going to do? In any case, guys, so that takes care of it. All right, this is the uh, final velocity or the velocity after the collision for the hockey puck. 
Notice it's sine is positive, and that would make sense because it said the puck is reflected back from the direction in which it came. All right, so we have our two answers. So guys, thank you so very much for taking the time to watch the video. I appreciate it very much. And if we were able to help you out at all, which I hope this video did, give us a little hand by hitting that subscribe button. That would be awesome and it'd be much appreciated. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.